Hi, this is Larry Jordan, and this is an excerpt of a recent power-up webinar looking at video compression inside Sorensen Squeeze, Adobe Media Encoder, and Apple Compressor. In this excerpt, we take a closer look at Sorensen Squeeze. Sorensen Squeeze is probably the most full-featured compression and publishing software, especially when it's combined with the free Sorensen 360 package that is bundled with Sorensen Squeeze. It runs on Mac and Windows. It can act as a front-end to Sorensen Engine, which is a compression software designed for workgroup compression. It has a vast array of Mac and Windows codecs that it supports, and really has just a couple limitations. One is the fact that it only supports 32-bit memory addressing, which slows it down a bit, and its price. It has a starting price of $549, but $749 for ProRes and DNX HD support, which I suspect all of us would want. So let me show you how to compress a file using Squeeze, how to configure a compression setting, how to set up a watch folder so we can do automated compression based on existing settings. But keep in mind that for watch folders to work, Sorensen Squeeze always needs to be running. The computer needs to be turned on. Squeeze needs to be running watching that watch folder. Generally what happens is the watch folder is posted to a server. Files get dropped into it. Squeeze grabs the files and does whatever you want to do with them. This is the Squeeze interface. It consists of three windows. It has the settings and interface controls over here on the left. This is where we are actually applying settings to specific videos in a preview window so we can see what's going on. To import a file, you'll never guess. You click the Import File button. It says, where is a movie? Let's pull our girls on the carousel in here. And there's our two girls. It says it's a 1920 by 1080 film. To play it, hit the space bar. There we go. And to stop playback space bar. Notice that I've got an in here and an out these are always set to be the entire duration of the film. I'm going to grab the out just to save ourselves some time and drag this so it goes right around 10 seconds. I'll put the playhead at 10 seconds right there and set the out to match the playhead. Keyboard shortcut is the letter O, which sets the out to match the position of the playhead. So there's our, our video, which we want to compress. The first thing I want to do is compress it for YouTube. So I'm going to do a search and type the first part of YouTube, this search box, allows me to search through all the YouTube settings. Now we've got a YouTube Flash version, an H.264 version, and a WebM version. Although YouTube can eat all of these, my recommendation is to work with the H.264 codec. Notice that we're specifying what size we want the YouTube video to be. For all of my training and for my clients, I recommend if you're posting videos to the web, post at 720. Although we can create videos at 1080, a lot of screens can't display video that big, and most people don't have download bandwidth big enough to adequately display a 1080p image. Rather than force people to watch something that's 1080, I would rather optimize my compression to have it look great at 720, where people can actually see that on the screen. The webinar you're watching now is a 720 image. So I'm going to grab the 720 setting and drag it on top of the clip. And now the YouTube preset has been applied to our carousel clip. I could right now click squeeze and it's going to automatically compress. But there's one more thing that I would like to do. I'd like to change the destination. Right now it's going into the same destination as the source file. And I can never remember where my source files are located. So if I want to change the destination, double click in the destination column. And I've created on my desktop a folder called compressed files. Normally I store this to my second drive, but the compressed files folder is only going to be used for the purposes of this demo and then I'm going to trash it. So I'll keep it on the desktop so I can find it. What this does is by storing the files inside the compressed files folder, I never have to worry about where the source files are kept. I just have to know that when they're done being compressed, they're going to be in the source files folder. So I assigned a setting based upon one of the presets that ships with the package. I change the destination either for this particular job or I could do it for all jobs and I say squeeze it. Going across here is a thermometer that shows the status of the compression time. Although it says a minute and a half it's going to take a lot less than that probably about 40 seconds and it's going to generate a compressed file. 
It's not going to be the full size. The source was 1920 by 1080. It's going to end up being 1280, 720, because that's the size that I post to YouTube. But it also is going to have a much higher bit rate than normal. I'll illustrate this in just a second. Let me just pull this out of the way here. Inside my samples movie folder, here's the girls on the carousel that you just watched. Notice it's a 1.3 megabyte piece of video. Now that the compression is done, I'll go to Compressed Files and open up the YouTube version. And notice it's almost four times bigger. It's 6.2 megabytes. It's a little bit more than four times. But let's look at the difference. Hide this, open the small one. This is recorded at 64360. Not bad, but a little bit of artifacting. And here's our YouTube video, much bigger. And I'm not seeing any artifacting. So I can now send this file to YouTube. And when YouTube recompresses it, it's going to look great because there's enough bits for YouTube to work. So when it recompresses, I'm not going to damage the quality of the video. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at video compression across three software packages, Sorenson Squeeze, Adobe Media Encoder, and Apple Compressor. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz slash store and look for Webinar 114. By the way, if you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 600 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. Thanks.